insects are uh, like you know, we broadly classify as useful to us and not useful for us. It's called harmful. So basically, uh, all insects are useful for nature, but we are looking at the organisms, uh, the insects from our viewpoint, and we call it useful to us and not useful to us. So, so we call it harmful. Why harmful? Harmful to the crops, what we plant. Okay. So that's how, otherwise all insects are useful, everything has a job to do. But we are the people who think we are the dominant characters in the world and we call them harmful. Otherwise, all are useful, all are having their job to do. And when we discriminated that, the number of what we wanted and what we don't want came out of balance because we selectively started killing certain types of insects which we thought is not useful. Without knowing that all have a role to play. Why we uh, human beings did not know the importance of all organisms because we were not uh, broad enough to think those days. So we started killing all those what we did not want. And that is how the whole imbalance started. And we started polluting the uh, nature so that good ones and the bad ones together started dying. And then now we started realizing the importance of that. Once again, I'll tell you, uh, the uh, pesticides what we use have no brains. It is chemical, so it has no brains, it cannot select the good insect and kill, uh, the bad insect and kill and good, save the good insect. So it is uniformly killing all the lives, so uh, instead of gaining the, uh, uh, the war, we started losing the war and at the end of the day, we started using more and more poisonous things, a little more stronger and uh, that has started showing on our health and uh, human health also and other, our pets, pets and uh, uh, domestic animals, everything started showing diseases and we have a lot of diseases which can be named now because of our misuse of chemicals. This uh, discussion is to tell you there are different types of insects which you can familiarize so that when you start attacking the insects at least you should know this is not a bad one. These are something which is helpful so that is what I wanted to show you the useful and non-useful or harm, harmful. I don't want to call it harmful but uh, it is called as harmful insects. Insects uh, known to us is more than uh, like you know, 100,000, uh, like 100,000 um, uh, insects are there, which is known to us, and there are many which is not very, very familiar to us. So the common ones which we see daily, some have been shown in the slides, so that we can at least know which is what. So this says uh, about a lot of things about insects, but I will tell you uh, the insects, uh, the common ones what we see are the flies, house flies, uh, mosquitoes. Um, all those uh, like uh, regular ones, uh, all those things which are uh, commonly seen are not very really harmful for the crops, but it is harmful for us, which crea creates diseases. Some uh, which starts eating our leaves and plants and all, uh, we, we, we call it as harmful because they destroy our crops. But uh, without realizing, there uh, some contribution is indirectly helpful for, uh, for us. For example, caterpillars of the uh, butterfly, they uh, start eating our crops and we think it is a harmful insect. <coughs> we kill the caterpillars. And in, without knowing that we are uh, killing the pollinators, pollination is important to have more seeds and good things. So indirectly, without knowing, we are killing that. The same way, there are many insects which is uh, this is a spider. Everybody knows it uh, uh, makes a good web and uh, filters all what is flying through. And uh, mostly, it will try to kill uh, uh, what is suitable for it. If it is too large, that will be dropped out. If it is too small, they will eat it. So this is a filter for their air, air filter. It makes a net and filters the insects. We call it as useful insects uh, because it is doing useful work, but uh, it is again indiscriminative. It will catch the useful insects also and harmful insects also. So it is, it is just a maintenance of number. So we cannot tell that it is 100% uh, like in the, in the human uh, view as a useful. It is filter. It is filtering the insects, controlling the numbers. This is another type of spider, the other, the other one made a net, this uh, makes a uh, trap on the floor and it's called fox spider because it makes, it makes a nest, a nest net on the floor and anything crawling on that, it will come out from the hole and pick it and go inside. So it's a different one. Everybody knows dragonfly, whichever way you call it, you can call it. This is useful because it catches all the mosquitoes what is flying around. All small insects flying around, it will catch. So it will reduce the number of 
uh, flying insects and that's what you see them swarming around in wet areas and all. Mosquitoes arise from the water, the, this will zoom in and catch up all those things. So this is very useful for us. This is the most important uh, for organic farming. All watch it once more. This is the most important insect for our organic uh, farming because it's a marker to show that your farm is not polluted by chemical sprays. It's called praying mantis. It's not actually praying, it's actually checking the air by doing its um, arm movements and anything uh, under its control stronger than it also will be crushed by that arm. It's very strong, even small snakes can be killed by this. So it's such a strong and it eats, uh, it's a cannibalistic insect, it eats its own uh, species also, own uh, mate will be eaten by its a different type but it is an indicator that if there is pollution it will not be there. This is another important uh, insect, ladybird beetle. It uh, controls if it's a sucking pest and uh, all small uh, larval insects on the leaves, it will be eaten by this. So it's a very important thing called ladybird beetle. There are different varieties. This is the zigzag printed one. Yeah. So there's also the Mexico ladybird. No, that is different. Mm -hmm. That is a, that's, a that's, that's pest, not yeah? that's a pest. That is the only ladybird which is having a, a vegetarian uh, taste. The other ones are all non-vegetarian. <laughs> <laughs> I no, I make it all funny so that you'll remember. Right? That you should remember that only when you have little fun only it'll register. Otherwise, it will become too, you know, yeah. So this one, anybody sees this, they will think right, killing it. Anybody sees this, they will think like, you know, we should kill it because it's looking so ugly and uh, very uh, atrocious. But uh, this is also helpful. This is the lava of the first one. This is the lava of this ladybird. And uh, this uh, does a wonderful job of cleaning up your leaves, cleaning up your crops by eating up all the suc sucking pets, pests there sitting and eating your uh, sucking your leaves. This will eat it off. You can see how it is eating. It go this is how it eats. Goes, catch, eat. That's all. No discussion. <laughs> <laughs> this one is also looking like a ladybird and it is a ladybird it's a cousin of the ladybird and uh, it is much better uh, it does a much better job than the other ladybird because the mealy bugs which is a very major pest for all our plants will be eaten by this bird this insect uh, it's called mealy bug destroyer cryptolamus and um, its lava uh, is a sad story I'll tell you again but once you see this and identify this don't destroy this this is a very important one red head black body yeah and like a small pea uh, seed it will be this is everybody thinks it's a mealy bug but it is not mealy bug that's why I said it's a tricky one so this is why it, the, it, the, its numbers get regulated because by human ma human mistake we kill it but this is the lava of the this, this insect and why did it wear that coat? Why did it wear this coat? To go along with the mealybug and kill the mealybug without being identified. But we think everybody is mealybug, so we spray. Yeah. We think it is mealybugs, we kill it. But this is useful. So, how do you differentiate? How do you differentiate? All observative farming people. How do you differentiate between this and the mealybug? Mealybugs, the main job of... Oh, okay. good, good. Yeah. Mealybugs main uh, what what is the uh, mealybug bug interest, interest, uh, interested in to to pick uh, prick a hole and suck Sucking. keep on sucking till its yeah. stomach is full yeah. and then ants will come and maintain it it'll tri ant will ant will keep tricking and then it'll keep on uh, spraying uh, sweet uh, honeydew and then ant will be happy and uh, it'll be a balance there but our plant will die so that is the job of this thing so mealybug's job is to prick a hole sit there and drink. But this guy's job is to hunt the mealybug, so he cannot sit there somewhere and hunt, uh, eat, no? He has to hunt. Once, once it's over, he has to go. So this one will move faster. So it will be faster moving and the shape also is a little different and a little larger also. So don't kill such an insect and wait and watch. It will clean up your mealybugs. So you, you got the point, no? Now why the mealybug is sitting and why this is running, you know. It has to run to get food. The mealybug has to sit to get food. So that is the difference. And um, uh, in the spree of ignorance, we spray all the things and kill evenly the best ones. So that is important. This is how that you can see the different size difference now. Mm. Mealybug 
the smaller one is the mealy bug, the larger one is this larva. So at least before spraying, see if there's a larger one sitting in the mealy bug. It's not a grown, overgrown mealy bug. It is <laughs> the different one. Yeah. So this is how you should differentiate. So when you see mealy bugs, just observe. See the larger ones. Anybody is faster moving, then you wait. You watch for so three days, four days. Your mealy bugs will be over. Otherwise, you spray. Then next set will come. The next set will come, and you have a continuous work of mission gun all the time, holding and safeguarding your plants. Nothing will be. Uh, you will get, ne get never get things. Yeah. The name is assassin bug. Why is it assassin? Assassination means to kill somebody. So this is a killer bug and uh, whom, uh, which all are its sprays, anything in front of it, it will be killed. And, and uh, the smaller ones die, the larger ones will howl with pain, including human beings. It will prick human beings also. And uh, uh, yeah, we will have painful, uh, some corners of the neck and all of it will bite when we are sli sleeping, dying down somewhere. So this is called assassin bug. But this is hu uh, useful, this is a useful one. Why is? Because it will control all the sucking pests, all the uh, eating insect, insects, leaf eating insects, everything what is in front of it, it will keep on punching and eating. Another view of this assassin bug, this can be differentiated with the other cotton stainer. Cotton stainer will have a stouter body, this has a flatter body and uh, uh, the shape is like a you know bent, so this, this is different. See how it is punching hole on a on a lava and how it is uh, killing the insect. Yeah, it it uh, pricks a hole, uh, sucks the juice out of it and kill it off. That's it. This is another bug called damsel bug. Same same job of uh, uh, regulating insects, but not as bad as uh, uh, it will not prick uh, hu uh, human beings at all. It will just do all these um, hunting also better than assassin bug. This is the insect which we search on the biodiversity uh, on, on our, on our uh, farms. We search this insect for the uh, biodiversity farms because when we move all these uh, compost and all, we will see this here. This is an important insect because it controls all the micro small small insects which is spreading around lavas, everything it will eat. So it's a lava controller. It will soil. Everywhere under the soil, where under the uh, compost, compost or any sort of decaying leaves, if you just move, you will see this. Early morning and early evening, not in the afternoon. This is a, all see this picture. It's a beautiful uh, uh, insect. It's called uh, by its beauty. It's called lace wing. The wing is like a lace, so it's called lace wing. Interesting thing is, this uh, insect uh, normally won't eat anything. After after maturing, it eats nothing mostly. If it is provided or getting a chance to uh, sip up a little of uh, this nectar somewhere, it will take that. Otherwise it is uh, uh, non-contributing, nothing. But it contributes to the nature in another way, which is what I am going to show you. It contributes this insect. It, its lava is this. Its eggs hatches and form to this. This is a voracious eater of all aphids and aphid-like insects. So. The other one, even though it is living and living a life and doing all these things beautiful, flying all, all around, for us this is important and its lava is very much important. And uh, this lava is so hungry that it is, uh, it, if it is not finding anything, it will turn back and eat the other one, this brother. Yeah. <laughs> the mother knows that once this lava is hatched out, it will clean up all the siblings. So what mother will thoughtfully do is, it will hang up, I will show you if there is a picture that is there I'll, or later also I will show you. It will hang each egg at least one inch long, one inch long transparent strands as if nothing is there. If the lava walks down, it will see nothing. Even the eggs won't be seen by the next one, the previously hatched ones. So all eggs, eggs will be hung like a bead from a, or a decoration like that. Somewhere uh, or if it is on the upward, it will stick it up on one inch top this thing. On a transparent uh, point, you will have a bead. Climb onto the transparent strand, they start walking, hunting for the thing. Their life goes faster and also the first laid egg will be hatching first. So it will start moving. The second one will come like that, like that. So timing is also there. So they all run the queue and all are safe. That way they do. This one is a different wasp. This wasp, uh, what happens is, you can see a long tail for it. The tail is... This is a female wasp. It has a long tail and the tail is uh, it's called oviposter. 
Uh, it's like a uh, hypodermic sy syringe. It's like a syringe. Yeah. And uh, it's very useful for us. Why it is useful is it is having uh, it will lay eggs inside the cat inside a caterpillar which is eating our leaves. And it cannot go there near the caterpillar and uh, sing because caterpillar can attack it. So it will stand far in a distance, poke a hole, lay eggs inside the caterpillar and then fly off. After three days, the eggs hatch inside the caterpillar, eat the caterpillar from inside and uh, uh, its life continues. The wasp life continues, caterpillar dies. This is how it does. You can see how far it is standing and poking a hole inside the caterpillar and laying eggs. Another Budiman Puka is here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is um, called a pirate bug. It's a very small one. And why it is called pirate? Because it it goes into the uh, nest or the, the colony of these uh, white flies. White fly eggs are there. Mm -hmm. And it pokes uh, and uh, drinks off all those uh, sap from inside the eggs and controls the white fly. So it's a very important one. This is a soldier beetle. Uh, we everybody sees it in the uh, tube light in the uh, evenings it will fly and come we think it is uh, that um, what do you call fireflies but this is not fly firefly but looks like a firefly there is no fire in the bottom everybody sees it but we don't know it is important I will show you why it is important this is how it is important it clean up, cleans up all the eggs which is under the leaves it is lava this is another fly springfield fly is also uh, we will see like as if some, why it's, it's called, also hover fly it's called. It comes and as if it comes to the plant and see like that. It will not fly. It will be, its wings will be moving but it will not move. It will be watching, watching, watching like that. So, wherever suitable place it lays eggs and when it lays eggs, again very useful insects come out. The lava is so beautiful and so uh, useful. It uh, goes into the uh, the aphid areas, clean up the aphid one by one very easily. You can see that in the mouth itself there is another uh, aphid. All these are common in our fields. Everybody, uh, uh, if you are observative enough, you will see this. Because these are all pictures which I see, uh, definitely see and uh, click. Another uh, version of that uh, hover fly, this is a little more common one. This also will do the same thing. It's lava also does the same job. This is another wasp which is interesting. Trichogamma wasp. What uh, it will do is, this will again control the white flies by laying eggs inside the white flies. And these are promoted by the, the block development board and all. They will have the eggs given in uh, small match boxes. Uh, and uh, it can be put into your coconut fields or wherever. They will hatch and multiply from there and it will control your uh, the uh, white fly infestation. So this is... Afraid of mealy bug, um, if you don't have the destroyer. No, mealy bugs, um, we have many ways. But first of all, we should know why the mealy bugs are coming. Mm. Mealy bugs won't walk in on uh, anything just like that and um, uh, uh, walk in. There are people who are interested in mealybugs. People in the sense, organisms are interested in mealybugs and uh, aphids and everything like that. So it multiplies just because there is a taker, there is a uh, breeder in your field who is breeding those things. You have to identify who is that. Who will be the breeder breeding these mealybugs or aphids and all? I will tell you. Ants are interested in mealybugs. I told you. I told you ants are interested in aphids. Ants are interested in mealybugs because only when and the mealybugs are there the uh, the mealybugs will uh, suck the sap out of the plants and then that sap can be harvested by the ants for getting their honeydew so that is the interest so it is like we growing cows for milk they grow aphids and mealybugs for their milk which is honeydew yeah and when honeydew is excess is sprayed you can see that black soot fungus growing on the leaves everything will become black because the, when the top the, uh, the bacteria this insect is there the honeydew is sprayed the fungus will not make anything waste so fungus will grow on that and the spores become black and then we see the leaf is black so everything is connected so your question is how to uh, get rid of them when you get rid of the ants or control the ants roaming around you can uh, by and large control that but once it is already affected the easiest way is to uh, spray neem oil emulsion uh, and just spraying won't go you have to take a old toothbrush dip it in the thing and dislocate it and then spray so that it will be cleaned up that is the one way if it is a small farm larger farm we have to keep spraying neem, neem, uh, this one neem oil emulsion alternatively uh, we will be discussing um, bio controls also Bio control called verticillium. Mm. We will be showing verticillium uh, mm. pictures so you can remember that verticillium can be sprayed so that verticillium will grow on these uh, uh, lava 
and uh, this is insects and they will kill it. But uh, over, over all, we should know one thing, they are all protected. Mm. This uh, mealy bugs are protected, everything is protected from water, from wetting. So we have to first wet the insect before spraying. Okay. And how do you wet it? Soap is the best one to wet anything and we cannot use commercial soap because it is inorganic. So we have to use natural trees, uh, natural fruit uh, soap which is fruit on the trees. What soap fruit on the trees? Anybody knows what fruit, uh, what soap fruits on the tree? Soap nut. Soap nut is there. Rita, it's called in Hindi. Yeah, and uh, in whatever the language you have to call it, call it. It's called soap nuts. Sapandas, it's called. Soap berries, it's called. So you can use soap berries instead of any soap to emulsify the oils. If it's on in your farm, uh, don't worry about any sort of material. Take soap nut, dissolve uh, one liter, uh, uh, one uh, in one liter, so, uh, uh, like filter it, spray it on aphids. Next day you will see all aphids are idle. It will not uh, move around because the, the, all the, uh, the, the breathing uh, pores are there. It's called spiracles on the side of it. It gets plugged. And it, the air dries it up so it will all be blocked. It will not, it will not be able to move. But since it is not sprayed with neem oil or anything, and just because the air holes are plugged, it is idle, the predators still yeah. feel it good to eat. Mm -hmm. So uh, we'll still maintain the predators by spraying, you know, uh, immobilizing the aphids and still uh, doing a good job. So all can try that in case. Okay. No, no need of spraying neem oil when you see aphids. Just spray so uh, this open it water and wait for a day. All will be uh, moving mm -hmm. uh, without any, uh, without be moving will be silent. Mm -hmm. And once we have already damaged it, the egg production also will come down. So proliferation of that insect also will be managed by just soap nut water, such an important thing. Mm. Mm. No chemicals used. Mm. And still it is a food for the predator. Mm. That's important, no? So predators also will be happy to not to go away. And we will have all the job done without any loss. And nature, nature friendly. So all these are done by me practicing and then talking. So not like, you know, theory read somewhere and all. Yeah.